Good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad I'm wearing a mic because I doubt anybody could hear me in the back of the hall otherwise. Uh, what a wonderful gathering over here. I'm a little bit like the, like the lettuce in a sandwich. Uh, it's a bunch of smart people who preceded me. Abhik showed us the promise of the future. Harsh spoke about uh, the horizons that are possible. Anurag uh, reminded us of our humanity in, in a very eloquent way. And there's a lot of smart people coming ahead of me as well. My colleagues, Amit Vadva, Anita Kotwani, and Santosh Kanavarupu are going to uh, get together with a whole bunch of really smart people. And in the middle of all of that, we have Roshni Das from Intel also uh, showing us the, the, the possibilities that are very much almost a reality, uh, in not just on the horizon, but even today. But why am I saying I'm like the lettuce in a sandwich? Uh, I'm going to be a little bit of an irritant. I'm going to be a little provocative and ask some questions that might make all of us uncomfortable. And uh, that is my single point agenda uh, for us today. Uh, but like most of us here in the advertising business, while uh, this was the topic given to me, I conveniently deleted the words in marketing, because we're good at ignoring briefs most of the time. But I also say that to connect the dot back with something that Harsh spoke about, about how, as a company, our vision now is to be a B2B2S company. And society is such an important critical stakeholder in everything that we do as we go forward, right? And it goes back to something that has become a convenient mantra for all of us in business, perhaps for the last 10 years at least, which is to say, do well by doing good. And some of you may know this little anecdote uh, comes from the 18th century when Benjamin Franklin first said these words. But in business, we have adopted this as saying, let's do some good while we are going about making lots of money. But in the context of sustainability, and I mean that not just in the context of the environment and the planet, but in creating sustainable ways of living and producing and consuming, it is no longer enough to do good. We have to do right. And that is a much tougher proposition, uh, which is why when Densu adopted squarely this mission of having society as a critical stakeholder in our business itself, not in how we do CSR, or how we do that as a side agenda, uh, I felt compelled to say we need to include that in the conversation when we are so excited about the, the potential and promise of AI, because we have to go into this with our eyes open about the perils as well. But is it all dark times? This quote is from the middle of the 1800s. It's from, it's the opening lines of the book, A Tale of Two Cities. And it seems so paradoxical, so oxymoronic when you read all of the words. But also at the same time, it seems so contemporary. It seems like he could have written this today. It could have been written about tomorrow as well. And it begs the question, so what is it exactly? Is it the best of times? Is it the worst, worst of times? Is it a time for wonder? Is it a time for despair? And the answer is yes because it is all of the above. But what it can become is up to us. Some of you may be familiar with this metaphor of how, especially in the last 40 years or so, technology has progressed through our society. There's something called the peak of inflated expectations. We've seen that with Web3, we've seen that with the metaverse, You've seen that with other technologies. But the ride and the fall from the peak of inflated expectations to the trough of disillusionment has been swift for many technologies because they've not lived up to the promise that they came with, right? Uh, how many of you still even remember that thing called an NFT? How many of us are still swimming in the metaverse? How many of us have actually been party to Web3, the way it was promised to be. But it's not all despair, because while those technologies might have fallen from the peak of inflated expectations to the trough of disillusionment, 
the technology of the day that we've been talking about has actually gone from there to what is called the plateau of productive reality. And it's gone about it in a way that has been almost unnoticed, right? Uh, as far back as 2011 itself, one of the most mainstream introductions of AI has, was, was amongst us, and it's become such an integral part of our realities, and that is the likes of Siri. We, we don't think of Siri as AI, but it's very much AI. We've gone through generations of change to say we are now into the age of generative AI, and tomorrow we will have predictive AI, and, and then the entity. Um, but the ride that AI has gone through seems to indicate that the promises and potential will outweigh the perils. And that's good news for most of us. So what might be cause for despair? What might be cause for us to think about why it's not always a good thing? Um, we've got, I've got three examples here for, uh, for a quote that I made up this afternoon. And that is that, so far at least, artificial intelligence is still no match for human stupidity. Uh, the things that we are capable of, the dumb things that we are capable of as humans, is because our scales of intelligence vary so much. Machines are still learning from us, right? But as these movies showed us, uh, Joaquin Phoenix and our own Rajnikanth in Robot, and this movie that is releasing tomorrow, uh, all of them try to see what is at the intersection of perhaps the worst of human biology and chemistry coming together to see what happens when a human falls in love with a robot, right? So we're still plumbing the depths of human stupidity. Machines have a long way to go. Or do they? Because we've experimented with this in the past. Uh, get some sound, please. The chicken crossed the road to become a sandwich. The chicken crossed the road to become a sandwich. Burger King encouraged the chicken, made with white meat chicken. Bed of lettuce for you to sleep on. Bed of mayonnaise for extra sleep. The chicken sandwich from Burger King tastes like bird. BK logo appears. Gender reveal, bad. Tender reveal, yum. It is a boy bird with crispy chicken tenders from Burger Thing. Like a lavender, but minus one. Math is tasty. Tender plus sauce equals romantic dinner. Eat the math. Pick two of these for six money bucks. BK logo appears. So they're catching up. The machines are catching up to our levels of stupidity. But actually, that's not the main story. The main story, as Abhik so vividly demonstrated, was we'll never have to be threatened by the machines because AI is never going to stand for artificial imagination. It's artificial intelligence. And imagination will always be a human domain. And that's why the potential and the promises will always outweigh what we can do. Um, I'm not going to reference any compassionate leaders over here. But sometimes you look at how far we've come, and you wonder and you hope that we never lose the ability to laugh at ourselves. Right? Because that, again, is something that I don't think machines will ever learn to do. To feel, to laugh, to cry, to emote, to connect with each other in the way that only humans can do is, again, a domain that machines will never take over. Which brings us, therefore, to the art of the possible and why this continues to be such an exciting time and such an exciting domain. And I use these illustrations in multiple ways, and I want to talk about them again today as well. Uh, again, we have people in the next three panels, especially in the second and the third panel, coming to us and talking about the power of data being uh, you know, multiplied exponentially in its utility and, and value. We've always had this kind of information at our disposal, and as I think Google likes to tell us, in the last 10 years, we've probably collated the same or generated the same amount of information as in the last 5,000 years. 
So information is not a problem, or the quantity of information is not a problem. And the machines are also helping us translate the information into intelligence. So we're finding patterns faster, we're connecting the dots faster, but in very linear ways. But the exciting possibility that we can leverage AI for is the one other phrase that uh, Abhik didn't use. He spoke about augmented humanity, but the other AI that we can do is to look at augmented imagination. Because what you have is the opportunity to take those same dots and connect them in magical ways because now those combinations are even more visible for us to take forward. I'll do a little bit of a trick over here. Now that I've shown you that a cat is possible, even though the dots don't connect, you'll still be able to see the cat. And so when you unleash the power of imagination with the power of intelligence, then you're able to create all kinds of magical things as we go forward. Which brings us to kind of bring all of those dots back together. Right? Uh, I'll, I'll go back to something that Harsh spoke about, which is the intersection of technology, sustainability, creativity, and innovation. And I speak about sustainability again in ways that create equal lives, equal societies, and of course, a more sustainable planet. If we can bring all of these together, then the possibility is not just of expanding the realm of marketing, but using marketing to expand the realm of possibilities to create a much, much better world, as this will demonstrate to you. Sound. Tuna. Tuna, one of the most precious marine resources. As the population continues to wage in Tokyo, the number of artisans that examine tuna quality has dwindled to half from its prime. This valuable skill might disappear in the near future. We challenged ourselves to create something that would ensure the sustainable supply of high quality tuna. Introducing TunaScope, an AI successor to Japan's long legacy of tuna inspection. The key was in the fish's tail. In markets in Japan, only a handful of artisans had been responsible for the inspection of tuna quality. Everything you need to know about the fish is said to be contained in this vital part. But this skill takes artisans at least 10 years to attain. We have taken a vast number of photos of crosscuts of tuna tails. Intuitive knowledge, once only attained through years of experience, was recreated through deep learning. TunaScope, an AI with an accuracy rate of over 90% compared to a veteran artisan, was created. We have expanded the use of this AI from Japan to the world. Japan's skillful inspection has become available everywhere. Furthermore, the project has been adopted as a promotion program supported by the government of Japan. Our goal is to collect data from tuna markets across the world using TunaScope and create a fair global standard of tuna quality. Our AI technology developed for TunaScope can be applied to various fields in the future. TunaScope, an expert eye for AI. I guess, in conclusion, in short, you know, what I started by saying the future in what it used to be, the possibilities that now are open to us are to say that the future can be whatever we want it to be. And it's our responsibility as much as the opportunity to shape it however we can. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the evening.